Take a look. What's going on guys, it's your boy Big Hero Chris back at you with another one. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and subscribe, give me a thumbs up, ring the notification bell, hit me up on Twitter, TikTok, the community post, you already know the vibes. And it's Wednesday, so you already know what that means, it's time for your AEW Dynamite review. And once again, it is that time of year, it is forbidden door season, that magical time where the internet crashes out because either you're on the side where you know who the New Japan and CMLL and Stardom talent is, or you're on the side where you don't really know who these talents are, you're not familiar with anybody that's on screen right now, you, you kind of don't know you're in that space base of uh, who is this i don't know who this is what's the story you, you you're either on one camp or the other or you're that select few that select few that's right in the middle where you're kind of familiar but you don't know but you kind of just sit back you know relax and enjoy the grabs that's the side i'm on prime example you have the blackpool combat club taking on some cml cmll wrestlers and I'm gonna be honest with you, I have no idea who any of these four are. But what I do know is that the Blackpool Combat Club has had issues with CML wrestlers in the past. I do know that they went over to Arena Mexico and they had a match over there. So you know, there is a little bit of familiarity with that little saga that's going on between the BCC and the CMLL. Also, Welcome back, Willa Yuta, who's been gone since 1996. We haven't seen this man in a long time. He's been out with an injury. I almost forgot he was the Ring of Honor pure champion, so that's a thing. <laughs> now, he was legit out for four months and he's still champion. I don't know. I don't know. But whatever it is, what it is. He ended up getting the win with the seatbelt, so you know, good for him. And also, speaking of um, the whole Forbidden Door thing, you have Mercedes Monet taking on Stephanie Vecure for the New Japan Strong Women's Championship. And apparently now it's winners take winner takes all where it's, um, Mercedes is gonna put up her TBS championship and Stephanie is gonna put up the um, New Japan Strong Women's Championship. So whoever wins gets two belts. Most likely it's gonna be Mercedes, but you know, good for them. We had um, Mariah May taking on Soraya and we had um, Time with Tony Storm on commentary. And during this match, it was made official that Time with Tony Storm will be taking on Mina Shirakawa for the AEW Women's Championship. You had Soraya beating Mariah May with that submission move that she uses. I forget what it was called, but you know, she did that. After the match, Soraya and Harley Cameron put the beat down on Tony Storm and Mariah, and then Mina Shirakawa comes out to make the save, and then, <laughs> and then you know. Things happen, you know, there's a whole bunch of, of, of chesticles involved, you know. Tony Storm said that AEW is where the breasts wrestle, and that's exactly what happened. There was a whole bunch of, you know, a whole bunch of titting going on, so there ain't nothing wrong with that. Ain't nothing wrong with that at all. So you have all those things involving Forbidden Door going on, so on and so forth. And, you know, for the most part, for me, it's a positive. One thing that I will complain about is the fact that we had to sit through five, one, two, three, four, five, Chris Jericho learning tree segments on this episode of Dynamite. When Chris Jericho said that he was getting off commentary for Rampage so he can be on Collision and Dynamite more and have more segments, I was like, all right, whatever. I didn't think too much of it. I thought it was kind of a joke. This dude was dead serious. Five segments, five segments. Why do you need five Chris Jericho segments on an episode of Dynamite? Why? I get he's the learning tree. I get that he's supposed to be this disingenuous person with his tall redwood, um, the big bill and his bad apple. And I'm like, I get it. But why do you need five segments, bro? Five. Five. I almost pulled my hair out. I'm like, if I see Chris Jericho one more time on this episode of Dynamite, I'm gonna pull out all my hair. I was close. I was dangerously close. Five seconds, that is ridiculous. So, and, and, and just when I thought it couldn't get any worse, 
we almost had a segment with the acclaimed they were coming out they're gonna start rapping and i'm like what what this is going from bad to worse uh, fortunately the evps matthew and nicholas saved us they cut this segment off because they claim mostly max caster and you know they said ugly disparaging things against our evps matthew and nicholas and that goes against the AEW handbook the um, AEW rules so their segment got, got cut I don't care what anybody says, the, the, man, the Young Bucks are, are the faces in this situation for saving us from the acclaim. So, you know, there's that. Also, speaking of the EVP, speaking of the Elite, you had um, Jack Perry, who I'm assuming he's automatically in this ladder match for the uh, TNT Championship because I don't think he's wrestled anybody. He had to face anybody. He didn't have to qualify. But you know who did have to, had to qualify? You had Mark Briscoe taking on Brian Cage. And I'm like, all right, this is interesting, you know. I haven't really, we haven't seen Mark Briscoe on AWTV in a while. He's the current Ring of Honor champion, so, you know, good for him. And he also beat Brian Cage to qualify. So it's him, Takeshita, and I'm assuming Jack Perry. Those three are in the ladder match so far. And I wouldn't be surprised if Christian finessed his way into the ladder match as well. Because Christian was talking to the Young Bucks. He was saying that he was he felt that he was screwed out of his championship match at double or nothing. And the and the Young Bucks were like, man, you know what, man? You guys have been doing a great job. If we could, we could give you all gold. So I think Christian is going to be in the ladder match too. So be on the lookout for that. So the first match on the show was a fatal four-way match and the winner of this match will wrestle Will Ospreay next week for the international championship and the participants were um Jay Lethal, Kyle O'Reilly, Ray Phoenix, and Orange Cassidy. So I'm sitting at home praying, begging, wishing, hoping against hope that Ray Phoenix won and he did. So next week is going to be Ray Phoenix taking on Will By God Osprey for the AEW International Championship. That should be a fire match, man. I'm already locked in for next week's Dynamite just off that match alone. But then after the match, you had um Trent come out with um Don Callis. They're about to put the beat down on Orange Cassidy. Orange Cassidy pulls out a chain from nowhere. I don't even know where the chain came from. But as you know, they're getting ready to fight. Chris Statlander comes out and she's trying to break up the fight. She's trying to pull a, um, a Jonathan Major. She's doing that thing. But it was all a ruse. She ended up slapping Orange Cassidy. And then you had um, Stokely Hathaway on the ramp talking trash. But then we had the return of Willow Nightingale and she ran off um, Chris and Stokely. And Stokely is a funny, funny dude because <laughs> he jumped on um, Chris Statlander's back like Yoda did Luke Skywalker and that was a pretty funny visual and then later in the show you had Willow Nightingale cutting a promo saying that she's gonna get her revenge on Chris Statlander and she's gonna smack the the black off of uh, Stokely Hathaway so you know that was pretty funny so earlier in the video I was complaining about the Jericho Vortex and Chris Jericho and his multiple segments one positive that did come out of this whole Jericho Vortex thing is Hook is now linked up with Samoa Joe and Samoa Joe was able to save hook from the jericho vortex a lot of other men aren't that fortunate we lost a lot of good men to that jericho vortex but somehow some way hook survived with the help of samoa joe and it kind of looks like <laughs> samoa joe was kind of taking hook under his wing it's kind of like a big brother little brother program and then out of nowhere you had um tony niece and the varsity athletes who i forgot to work for aw they pull up on hook and they're trying to talk trash so be I'm, I'm pretty sure we're gonna get a, at least some type of tag team match between um Samoa Joe and Hook versus the varsity athlete. So there's that. And Garcia got a video package and he wants to fight Will Ospreay. So maybe one day down the line in the future, maybe at All In or All Out or one of the pay per views, maybe we get some um. Daniel Garcia versus Will Ospreay because this is the second week in a row where Daniel Garcia said that he wants to fight Will Ospreay for that international championship. So I ain't gonna be mad at it either way. Speaking of all man, it was announced that the winner of the Owen Hart tournament will go on to face the champion at all in. And Brian Danielson is throwing his name in the hat. 
he said that you know this was supposed to be the, is the last year of him being a full-time wrestler and it hasn't really gone the way he wanted it to he's lost a whole bunch of matches and the straw that really broke the camel's back was the fact that he lost at um at our candy arena at double or nothing so he said he's gonna go if he's gonna go out he's gonna go out swinging he's gonna enter into the um owen hart tournament and hopefully he will win and face whoever the champion is at all in and you know i don't know who else is going to be in this tournament but as of right now i'm rooting for brian danielson because he's the only person that's in, in the tournament so far so so now we have the two main things left to talk about the first thing i want to talk about is the return to aw dynamite of maxwell jacob freeman mjf he comes out he kicks off this of the show he gets a hero's reaction even though he came out of the heel tunnel he's back to form he's back to being mjf the mjf we all know and love before this whole kangaroo kick thing before this whole thing with adam cole before the power of friendship took over we just got dick mjf he's talking trash straight up talking trash about the AEW champion pretty kind of buried him a little bit he said that even though swerve is a, a business man and a mogul he must have missed the part where you take you go to speech class and this is kind of mjf's backhanded way of saying swerve can't talk even though that's not really the case he went on to bury okada he made fun of his body and then he started talking about will osprey and he made fun of his teeth because you know get it he's british lol lol but he did say that we took exception to the fact that will osprey called himself the best best wrestler in the world when mjf feels like he's the best so maybe just maybe we might get mjf versus osprey at all man who knows i don't know we gotta wait and see but you know as mjf is talking he's interrupted by of all people roosh roosh comes out and he says a whole bunch of stuff but ultimately he says listen pedro when you mess with the bull you get the hands and mjf you know he says some disrespectful stuff in spanish blah 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 this leads to a big brawl between mjf and roosh when these two wrestle, I don't know. Most likely at Forbidden Door, because MJF did say something about wrestling either a random Japanese person or a random Mexican. So it doesn't get any more random and more Mexican than Roosh. So <laughs> most likely that's gonna be your Forbidden Door match. Now speaking of Swerve, speaking of whose house, Swerve's house. We go to our main event: Roderick Strong, Swerve Strickland for the AEW Championship. Now how this match came about. I will tell you because I'm just as confused as probably you are. So last week we had the gauntlet um, sudden death match in which Will Ospreay won. And the rules of the match are there's 21 wrestlers in total involved, but the first person to get a pin wins the match, whether it's all 21 people involved or whether it's just two people. And at the time when Will Ospreay won, it was nine people involved in the match. Roderick Strong was slated to be number 10, but he never got to come out because the match was already over. So, of course, Roddy is upset by this. But Roddy goes up to Tony Khan and demands a championship match, and Tony Khan actually gave it to him. That's why we have this match going on right now. And it doesn't really make sense because Roddy didn't do anything to deserve it. He The match was over. He lost fair and square. Even though he didn't win, he didn't lose that's the breaks man you, you you didn't get an opportunity to win so i don't understand how exactly roddy got a championship match but here we are and of course the match was good because it's roddy and swerve that was just my issue is roddy didn't do anything to earn it swerve ended up getting the win and it was a really good match so yeah there's that but with that being said guys what did you think of this week's episode of dynamite I thought overall it was an okay show. You had some good things going on. Some good setup for Forbidden Door, an MJF promo, a good main event match, some stuff in the middle. It is what it is. But with that being said, guys, what did you think? Let me know in the comment section below. Of course, as always, like, comment, and subscribe. You guys take care. Bees, I'm out. Peace.